vortex identification and large eddy simulations under the lattice Boltzmann framework with the Smagorinsky subgrid model, a work by Khodr Jaber, Ebenezer Essel, and Pierre Sullivan from the Department of Mechanical and Industrial Engineering at the University of Toronto. The lattice Boltzmann method is a relatively new method for simulating fluid flow. This method is advantageous with respect to standard methods and computational fluid dynamics in fundamental ways. The issues of discretization of the advection terms and treatment of the pressure term, which can sometimes require iteration or solutions of Poisson equations, are bypassed entirely. The method employs explicit time marching and attends towards a very straightforward parallelization. There are, of course, drawbacks. The lattice Boltzmann method is only valid in the low Mach number regime. The method also becomes unstable at higher Reynolds number, which has motivated the use of turbulence models alongside it. Success has been reported in the literature in combining large eddy simulation with the lattice Boltzmann method, which will be referred to in the remainder of this presentation as the LES-LBM method for the simulation of turbulent flows. A common benchmark for solver validation in CFD is the lid-driven cavity. In three dimensions, it is a cubic cavity surrounded by solid walls which are all stationary except for the lid, which moves in a fixed direction at constant velocity. The problem setup is simple. Geometry is not complicated and boundary conditions are of the Dirichlet no-slip type. However, at higher Reynolds number, the flow becomes increasingly rich and complex, developing coherent structures over a large range of physical scales. To our knowledge, the 3D lid-driven cavity has been studied at Reynolds number up to an order of magnitude of 10 to the power of 4, or 10,000. This is likely due to limitations in computational power on the CPU, which prevents employment of finer meshes, meaning that simulations are inevitably under-resolved when the Reynolds number is sufficiently high. There are two issues to be considered in approaching the 3D cavity at higher Reynolds number. Is there a way to exploit advances in CFD like the LES-LBM method to simulate turbulent flows with sufficient resolution? And what is the best way of revealing coherent structures in such simulations? And what is the impact, if any, of LES-LBM on its performance? That the LBM is easy to parallelize makes it a prime candidate for use on the GPU rather than the CPU. GPUs possess a larger number of cores than CPUs, which provide much more pronounced speedups. A parallel LES-LBM scheme on the GPU may have the right combination of efficiency and computational power to make adequate resolution possible. Regarding coherent structures, a number of vortex identification criteria have been proposed, each attempting to resolve issues with their predecessors. Initial attempts to define the vortex, such as regions of local pressure minima or spiral-shaped streamlines, were found to be faulty. More recent criteria, such as the Q criterion of Ray, Moin, and Hunt, and the lambda 2 criterion of Jung and Hossein are derived from an eigenvalue analysis of the velocity gradient tensor in such a way that expected properties of vortices are fulfilled while possible faults are properly addressed. For the present work, we will investigate whether or not an LES-LBM method can be used to simulate the 3D lid-driven cavity problem when the Reynolds number is increased to 100,000. We will check that coherent structures in the simulated flow occupy a range of physical scales that is characteristic of turbulent flows, and this will be accomplished using power spectral density plots. Finally, we'll compare the aforementioned vortex identification criteria in visualizing the structures that are generated by the LES-LBM method. The lattice Boltzmann method simulates fluid flow from a mesoscopic description of the physics rather than a macroscopic one. The numerical solution of the Navier-Stokes equations is recovered in terms of particle population distributions. In addition to discretization in space and time, the method involves additional discretization along velocity sets. Velocity elements are associated with a particle distribution representing the density of particles with that particular velocity. There are two main components of a single step in time, collision and streaming. In a single relaxation time lattice Boltzmann method, Collision of the particles results in relaxation towards an equilibrium distribution at a relaxation rate that is specified by the viscosity of the fluid. Particle distributions are then streamed in the direction of their corresponding velocity element. Macroscopic properties like density and velocity are recovered from the newly updated particle distributions. 
large eddy simulation is combined with the lattice Boltzmann method by modifying the relaxation rate that governs the collision step. With Smagorinsky subgrid scale modeling, an effective viscosity is defined as the sum of the physical viscosity of the fluid and a turbulent viscosity which includes the effects of unresolved physical scales in the system. This term will vary in space and depends on the rate of strain tensor. Luckily, it is possible to compute the tensor without resorting to finite differences by using non-equilibrium particle distribution functions, reducing computational expense. Thus, only a simple, mo simple modification is required to form the LES-LBM. Turbulent viscosity is calculated at each cell from which the effective relaxation rate is recovered before collision and streaming are performed. We can make use of the cavity's simple geometry to divide the problem among a number of GPUs. Since there are no interactions between neighbors during collision and streaming, time marching of each cell can be done independently by individual threads on the GPU. To facilitate the streaming step, access to distribution functions of neighboring cells is needed. However, loading an entire lattice section into the GPU may exceed its memory limitations. Instead, a layer-by-layer -layer approach is taken where one XY plane of cells is loaded at a time into the GPU along with layers above and below it to ensure access to neighboring distribution functions from all cells. Updated distributions replace the older ones on the host memory after streaming and the process is repeated. All simulations were performed on Cynet's MIST GPU cluster, which is housed at the University of Toronto. Each node possesses 256 gigabytes of RAM and four NVIDIA V100 GPUs, each with 32 gigabytes of memory and with NVLinks in between. The simulations in this work use only one node each with a maximum wall time of 24 hours. The multi-GPU scheme can, however, be further extended into a multi-node multi-GPU scheme to further accelerate simulations. Animations of simulations with a mesh resolution of 256 cubed, which were performed using more than one node, will be showcased later in this presentation. The four main parameters which govern problem definition, stability, and solution quality are the mesh resolution, lid velocity, Smagorinsky constant, and Reynolds number. Five case studies were run in this work with variations in these parameters. The first case was used solely for generating ISO surfaces of the vortex identification criteria to be compared. Power spectral densities were computed from the first three cases for comparison of the inertial subranges. The fourth case was studied alongside the first to determine the effects of decreasing the Smagorinsky constant on stability and structure formation. The fifth case was used for validating the present implementation of the LES-LBM method. The lid velocity is set to 0.25 meters per second for all cases to ensure consistent stability behavior. To validate the present LES-LBM implementation, mean streamwise and vertical velocity profiles from two reference works are used for comparison with the results from case 5, which consisted of a mesh resolution of 150 cubed and Smagorinsky constant of 0.2. The mesh is made relatively coarse to allow enough iterations and time for mean velocity values to settle within the prescribed maximum wall time. Profiles of the present work were extracted at t equals 800 seconds or 120,000 iterations. There is a clear agreement between the profiles reported in the reference works and the present work. Power spectral densities were computed for Reynolds numbers of 10,000, 50,000, and 100,000 using streamwise velocity fluctuation signals that were probed at a single point in the cavity and at a sampling rate of 20. A mesh resolution of 200 cubed is used for all three cases. As the Reynolds number increases, the inertial subrange, which is the region of constant minus 5 over 3 slope on the curves, is seen to increase. This region is found between 0.03 and around 0.08 Hz for the case of Reynolds number of 10,000, and in between 0.03 and around 0.3 Hz for the case of 100,000 Reynolds number. This is an increase from around half a decade to a whole decade. For case 1 with Reynolds number 100,000, ISO surfaces of Q criterion, vorticity magnitude, and lambda 2 criteria are plotted at varying value to help reveal the density of the structures, as well as their shape in the interior. All plots were obtained at a time of t equals 150 seconds. Worm-like structures emanate from the top left corner of the cavity and begin to fill it, starting with the leftmost side. However, the sizes of the structures are relatively uniform for the Q and lambda 2 criteria in contrast with those revealed by the vorticity magnitude plots which appear to be smudged. 
This is especially true near the top left corner, the lid, and the right hand side of the cavity. These are simulations for the cavity at a Reynolds number of 100,000 after having extended the scheme to be both multi node and multi GPU, visualized with the Q criterion. The animation on the left has a resolution of 128 cubed, while the one on the right has 256 cubed. These animations are also of simulations with a resolution of 256 cubed. However, visualization is with vorticity magnitude, lambda 2, and Q criteria, respectively. In conclusion, we successfully simulated the three-dimensional lid-driven cavity at a Reynolds number of 100,000. We plotted and compared ISO surfaces of vorticity magnitude, Q, and lambda 2 criteria. We found that the latter two criteria performed similarly and alleviated some of the issues in revealing structures when using vorticity magnitude, such as smearing near the lid. Power spectral densities were plotted for varying cases of Reynolds number. We found an increase in the inertial subranges from about half a decade in length from the, for the case of 10,000 Reynolds number to about a decade for the case of the 100,000 Reynolds number. We were able to simulate the lid-driven cavity up to resolution of 200 cubed on a single node of the emiss GPU cluster sufficiently, given the constraint on wall time. Extension to multi-node simulations means that finer meshes are no longer prohibitively expensive. Thank you for your attention.